So in this video I want to actually uh, introduce you to the uh, slotted waveguide antenna. Now I've never actually made one of these on my channel and to be perfectly honest with you I've uh, never actually made one of these full stop. Uh, if you have a Google around you can find a few blogs where uh, there's a little bit of text describing uh, the slotted waveguide antenna and uh, normally a few pictures of somebody holding a uh, piece of uh, extruded aluminium and uh, you know and that's about it there is definitely no uh, actual youtube videos showing you practically how to actually make one of these not for the uh, higher frequencies anyway so a question that i actually get asked quite a lot is uh, which is the uh, best uh, wi-fi antenna or antenna for fpv and uh, there is no answer to that question all antennas have uh, certain benefits and uh, weaknesses and uh, it's better to have a uh, few of each from each type of family now this uh, particular antenna the slotted waveguide has uh, a lot of range to it it works well over a uh, long distance because uh, it's got the waveguide element to it now the trouble with a uh, normal waveguide antenna say like a uh, cantenna it uh, has a lot of range but it has a very narrow beam width so you have to have it pointed directly where you actually want to pick up the signal or send the signal for it to work but uh, a slotted waveguide antenna depending on how long you're going to make it you can overcome the uh, narrow beam width of uh, that waveguide antenna because you can actually extend this out and by extending it out you actually uh, increase the beam width so i do think the uh, slotted waveguide has a lot of potential especially for uh, fpv at uh, 5.8 gigahertz for instance so what i'm going to do i'm going to kick off this video with a very very simple uh, design that i've come up with this one is for uh, 2.4 gigahertz for uh, Wi-Fi or if you actually run your FPV at 2.4 gigahertz and uh, it's a nice simple design that I've come up with it's quite small small for a uh, slotted waveguide anyway it only has three slots in it but um, it'll give you the uh, general idea of how this actually works and to to be honest to actually explain how this works I'll probably have to do a separate video just on that but for now we can actually have a go at building this and uh, give it a test and just see what it's like just with the three slots here now another thing to note about uh, this particular antenna because there's no real information out there on this and I've never uh, built one of these before like I've said um, this is probably the first antenna I've uh, actually come up with a design for that uh, I've actually had to uh, design it purely using mathematics I uh, haven't done anything like that with just pure mathematics since I was at university many years ago now so this is uh, a design that I've come up with just using my uh, pen and paper and my calculator uh, using uh, you know all the uh, different uh, equations and uh, uh, to be honest with you it's a long time since I've had to do that and uh, I did have to uh, use reference books reference books quite a lot but um, this is the design that I've come up with and I think it's a, a good baseline to actually start off and uh, we can actually build on this to make bigger ones in uh, videos to come so a nice little uh, simple design to actually start off with so the template that I've actually designed for this is uh, three pages long and uh, there'll be a link of course in the description where you can actually download it from and uh, the first one here is actually the front of the antenna with the cutouts for the uh, three slots and the uh, second one is a uh, template for actually constructing the back and the side so we're going to put this on a uh, piece of tin and actually cut it out and actually bend these two sides up so we get that uh, box to the uh, waveguide itself and uh, the third sheet is actually two pieces here that we can cut out for the top and the bottom and there's also a hole here where you're going to need to uh, drill your feed point in for the slotted wa waveguide so let's uh, have a look at some of the materials that I'm going to use to construct this and uh, why I've actually chosen those materials as well 
So we're going to concentrate on making the body of the uh, slotted waveguide first then. So the front of the antenna I'm going to use a piece of uh, PCB board and uh, this is actually double sided PCB but uh, you don't have to use double sided, single sided will be fine. It's just that uh, I only have uh, the double sided at the moment, I haven't got any single sided and we're going to cut the slots out on the, the PCB here for the front of the antenna. Now the body of the antenna I'm going to use this old cookie tin again I'm just going to stick the template down on this and actually cut it out really easy to work with and you can also solder this as well so that's going to be my uh, main body of the antenna. Now I've stuck my uh, template down onto my PCB board here so I'm ready to start cutting out the slots. Now how I'm going to actually cut these out I'm going to actually use this 8mm drill bit because I want my slot to be uh, eight millimeters thick and if you look at these they are slightly uh, tapered at either end and uh, this will be very very difficult to actually cut out so I'm going to use uh, an eight millimeter drill bit and uh, drill a hole at either end of this uh, teardrop shape if you like here use a ruler to get a uh, straight edge on each side of that so the uh, length of the slot itself is 50 eight millimeters long now uh, for this uh, antenna to actually work at 2.4 gigahertz it uh, needs each slot needs to be uh, roughly half a wavelength long now 58 millimeters is a little bit short of half a wavelength uh, if you actually worked it out using the standard equation uh, for 2.4 gigahertz but because we've got that eight millimeter thickness as well we have to factor that in so it only needs to be 58 millimeters long and uh, that eight millimeters thick so as I say I'm going to drill a hole at heaver end I'm going to draw a straight line and then I'm actually going to cut along that straight line with the uh, cutting wheel it'll just make it a lot easier to cut out these slots this shape rather than this teardrop shape so I've drilled the uh, two holes at either end of the slot and I just got a ruler and drew a straight line to uh, the side of each hole there and uh, then what I can do is go with my uh, cutting wheel here and cut a straight line on the bottom here and one on the top and then I should have a nice shaped uh, slot there that I can just tidy up with a file. Um, when I actually made this template I hadn't uh, actually built one yet and that teardrop pattern that I uh, came up with would be extremely difficult to actually cut out with a Dremel and hand tools so uh, what I'll probably do is um, add another page to the template and uh, also incorporate this shape here if uh, you I need to uh, cut yours out with hand tools but if you actually have access to a uh, CNC machine then you can do the teardrop um, pattern much easier but uh, for uh, hand tools it's a lot easier to do it this way So I've got the slots uh, cleaned up and pretty straight then with the file and uh, to be perfectly honest from what I've read the uh, main consideration is that uh, uniform gap all the way down the slot there. It doesn't matter so much if it's a little bit uh, wonky as long as that gap remains uh, quite constant. From what I've read in a few books you uh, can even have these slots in say a uh, S shape as long as uh, they are the correct length and uh, they've got that uniform width but uh, although at this point in time I don't know what having a uh, S shape benefits would actually give you but uh, I'm pretty happy how these have turned out so what I'm going to do now is uh, glue the template onto the uh, tin here I've cut it down to make it a little bit easier this is for the uh, back and the sides of the uh, waveguide so I'm just going to stick this on and cut all this out with some tin snips. So I've cut the tin out to the template and uh, although I use tin snips you can even use uh, some sharp scissors with this uh, cookie tin because it's so thin you can just cut it like cardboard and uh, just like cardboard as well here I'm going to bend these two ends in to form uh, the enclosure. You can just get yourself a ruler put it down the line there on the template where you're going to put your bend get yourself something sharp like I've got this brad hole here and you can actually score the tin just like cardboard just do it a few times a little bit of pressure 
and score it in there and then you'll get a nice bend uh, with a nice uh, right angle bend it'll be a really neat way of doing it rather than trying to actually bend it on the edge of something put a score down it first so on the back there you can see that I've scored and it's made that uh, indentation all the way through so all you need to do now is flip it over put the ruler back up against that score line there a little bit of pressure on here and just uh, gently bend this up and you'll get a nice straight line all the way down that score now for the ends i had to get some uh, different tin because there wasn't quite enough on uh, the one that i had to make all the components for this antenna so i just uh, used two ends uh, a friend of mine actually saves me those uh, big baked bean catering tins they are quite large and i just used uh, the ends of uh, one of those and uh, i've done the uh, top one here and uh, you can already see this is the uh, first prototype I've made up of this and uh, this is the kind of thing that uh, you know you revise when you do a prototype so I've got to cut away some of that tin there because it's uh, covering the slot slightly so uh, what I'm going to do now is bend the edges on this one and then uh, just uh, fit that make sure it fits nicely on that end and then what I'm going to do is start cleaning the edges of this and I'm hoping that it will all solder together and I don't have to use any glue I should be able to uh, flow solder along here and then solder the top on here and uh, we leave the bottom while last because I've still got to do the uh, mounting in here for the feed itself but uh, as far as uh, the template goes for a uh, first prototype it's actually come together quite well I'm pretty pleased with this so I'm ready to start soldering this together now now what I've actually done to help me I've actually uh, put some packaging under here some uh, bits of cardboard to uh, lift this up and because I was a few millimeters short of actually getting it where I actually wanted it level here I've uh, just used three metal rulers to actually uh, take up the uh, few millimeters gap that I needed so I'm just using whatever I uh, have to hand to actually help me to do something like this and uh, what I'm actually going to do is start soldering this and I'm going to start just using my soldering iron now I'm hoping that soldering iron will uh, pretty much do the job of doing it but um, if uh, I come into a bit of areas where you know there's a lot of metal here if it doesn't quite flow right what I'll do I'll put it on with the soldering iron the solder and then uh, I'll come in with a small pen blowtorch and just uh, reflow it if it doesn't uh, you know flow nice and uh, neatly if uh, there's some gaps in there for instance because you don't want any gaps in this box whatsoever you want it to be uh, quite airtight because any gaps down the sides here anything like that will actually radiate um, on their own so you probably have your 2.4 gigahertz uh, radiating from here and uh, another frequency radiating from the side so this is uh, a little bit more time consuming than uh, most antenna bills but uh, you could also use some aluminium tape to uh, tape up the sides probably just tack a little bit of solder along there and then uh, cover it with some aluminium tape I would use aluminium tape because it is uh, quite cheap you can get a big roll of it off eBay for just a few pounds copper tape you could use but again copper tape a little bit more expensive but uh, I'm going to see if I can actually uh, flow solder all the way around this uh, it'd be a little bit of a neater job so I've got it all soldered up now it looks a little bit messy but I'm going to clean it up on the uh, grinder in a moment but uh, I did apply it all with the soldering iron and just uh, flowed it in there with the uh, small pen blowtorch but uh, when I'm actually soldering something like this I do use slightly thicker solder than what I use uh, on electronics this is about uh, 18 SWG so it's a little bit thick no good for electronics but for actually soldering something like this it's perfect so the main body of the antenna is uh, finished then I've uh, cleaned away all the excess solder there ground it away and uh, cleaned it up it's uh, much neater now and uh, this part of the antenna is actually finished so what I'm going to do now is move on to how we actually feed this antenna so I've cut out the bottom template but uh, the bottom template also has this hole here so I've drilled that out and I've actually drilled it out a little bit smaller than the uh, black mark that I made on the template 
just uh, wide enough to feed this coax through because I'm actually going to connect to this using this length of coax. You could also use something like uh, this connector where you could actually solder that directly on to the back of the uh, tin, no problem at all. And you can use that to connect to the antenna, but uh, I'm going to use uh, some coax for this build. But again, when I show you uh, with uh, modifying the coax, you just do the same with one of these. Now to make the main driven element part of this antenna, we're going to make a uh, kind of monopole, very similar to the kind of uh, driven element you would find in say a cantenna. And the uh, copper wire that I'm going to use is 1.5 millimeters thick, so it's quite sturdy stuff. And uh, I've put a little mark in the middle of the uh, PCB board here, actually uh, 50 millimeters in from the side. And I've also made that mark exactly uh, 10 millimeters long. So what we're going to actually do with the copper wire then is have the uh, copper wire protruding up through the base by 10 millimeters. And then at that 10 millimeters, we're going to put a sharp right angle bend in there. And uh, then we're going to have a length of the uh, copper wire that's exactly 31 millimeters long. Now 31 millimeters is a quarter wavelength at 2.4 gigahertz. And the uh, template that I've made here with the hole for the feed point, the center of the hole is exactly 31 millimeters from this side wall here. So the first thing we're going to do with the uh, copper wire then is make the driven element. So I'm going to have 10 millimeters and then I'm going to put a right angle bend in and then I'm going to have exactly 31 millimeters for the main driven element. So this is my driven element then now it's been measured off. It's got 31 millimeters along its long length and uh, 10 millimeters along its short length. Now what I'm actually going to do with this, I'm going to solder it where I've put that mark 10 millimeters up directly onto the uh, front of the uh, waveguide antenna here. Now, at the beginning I said you didn't have to use a double-sided circuit board like I have. If uh, you didn't use double-sided circuit board and it's just single-sided, what you can do is drill yourself a small hole through here and actually solder this on the uh, reverse side. Just have it uh, sticking out a small bit, solder it in place and just trim away any waste. But uh, because I've used a double sided board here, I'm just going to solder it directly onto the PCB. It doesn't have to be a particular strong connection, you just want to make sure that it is connected. So it's going to be next to impossible for me to actually show you how to solder this on camera. There's just not enough room and it's uh, far too fiddly. But um, what I've done here, I've already pre-tinned around the hole here. So it'll make it easier to solder that outer braid directly to the uh, base here. This is the ground plane. And uh, I've already pre-tinned the uh, point of uh, the driven element where I'm going to solder this uh, inner core of the coax through. So what I'm going to do is feed that through the bottom there and I'm going to solder the coax in place and then feed that little bit of heat shrink tubing up round and on the top there just to actually uh, protect it. And then I'm going to pull this out slightly, feed that uh, outer braid down over the uh, inner dielectric there and solder it directly to the uh, base here, the ground plane. And then the little bit of heat shrink tubing that uh, I've got here, I should be able to push that up through there just to protect that and to tidy it up as well. And of course I've already got in there and I've cleaned up all the sides of the tin here and on the uh, antenna itself just to make that easier as well for me to solder all that in place when I've actually got the coax soldered on. So that's the uh, driven element soldered in place and the uh, heat shrink tubing as well does uh, two jobs. It protects that solder joint but uh, it also insulates this from uh, the bottom part of this ground plane. We don't want it to come into contact with the bottom part where we're going to solder this outer braid to. We want to uh, have it coming in contact where we've soldered it in place directly onto the front there. And here's the uh, outer braid. I've uh, pulled it back down over the top there and flared it out into this mushroom shape. So what I'm actually going to do is flood all of this with solder and also tin all this up and that way we'll have a really strong joint there so we've got no fear of actually ripping it off and ripping out the uh, connection that's now inside as well. So flood plenty of solder in there, 
let it cool down in between as well if you can because a lot of heat will build up here and the last thing we want to do is to melt that uh, in a dielectric insulator so flood plenty of solder around this part first and then just tin this as well just to protect it so the antenna is actually finished now all the uh, soldering down the seams here probably took me about 40 minutes and uh, i did actually get better at it as i uh, went along and i never actually took uh, metal work at school i think it's called shop in america and uh, the, we just don't teach it in uk schools anymore because uh, the children the students aren't allowed to use the uh, machinery and uh, i worked at a school uh, probably five or six years ago now and uh, they had two workshops fully kitted out with uh, heavy metal working lathes and milling machines and that sort of thing and uh, nobody was allowed to use it uh, only the teachers were allowed to use it and uh, the head teacher in an uh, infinite wisdom there actually uh, sold it all off as scrap and the guy who came to uh, collect it all with his uh, workers and load it all onto their lorries had a uh, very big smile on his face because uh, for uh, heavy duty lay for instance uh, he was giving the uh, school £50 uh, scrap for that and you can bet your bottom dollar that uh, a week later it would have been on eBay for a couple of grand easily so uh, yeah it's a sad state of affairs in uh, the UK now especially with health and safety and uh, all um, students really uh, make nowadays is uh, a perspex keyring so uh, we've gone from uh, heavy duty metal work and teaching actual skills down to making a uh, perspex keyring it's a little bit mad so what i'm going to do is pop some paint on this then and uh, we'll give it a uh, bit of a test and see how well it actually performs so what I'm going to do in this test then, I'm going to start off with the antenna in the vertical position and then when everything's settled down I'm going to actually turn it into the horizontal and when I actually turn it into the horizontal you'll see big increases in the signal strength of most of the access points that we're going to pick up. I think a lot of this is down to beam width but um, it's rather significant you do see a big change so I'm going to try and do this test all in one take so if a car starts beeping its horn I'll just have to leave it in so what I'll do I'll scan now and just let everything settle down so it's performing not too badly I'd say it's just a middle of the range antenna with some of those uh, signal strengths but um, Look what happens when I actually turn it into the uh, horizontal. So now that it's actually settled down, you see some big increases there, at least most of them 10% across the board. So uh, it's a very interesting antenna. So I'll turn it back into the vertical and they should drop down again. Just let it settle down. So they've dropped right off there by about 10% again. So as I said at the beginning of the video, this uh, particular design of antenna has a uh, very narrow beam width, much like the uh, Cantenna. But uh, the sides here, it is very, very narrow, very narrow uh, beam width at the sides. But on the ends, it's uh, a little bit wider. So when I've got it in this position, and I'm scanning for Wi-Fi access points. Uh, a lot of the uh, beam width is going up into the sky and being lost but when I actually turn it uh, horizontally like this uh, we're getting all that beam width then down at a more uh, to a, uh, ground level where Wi-Fi access points normally are so we're seeing a big increase in uh, power so I think this particular design of antenna could be quite useful for uh, quadcopters an FPV because you could actually set it up with some kind of uh, quick swivel where you could actually have it in the uh, horizontal like this and then quickly just tilt it into the vertical depending on how you're actually flying so if you're actually at uh, more ground level going in and out of trees 
obstacles that kind of thing you could have this horizontally like this but then if you actually want to gain some height you can just flip it and turn it into the vertical and that beam width will work much better for you when you're actually at a uh, greater height so this video has been a little bit long but i just wanted to include all the methods into the basic build of uh, the uh, slot waveguide antenna so that way i can make my other videos a little bit shorter just concentrating on uh, different build ideas and i can just refer back to this video so i don't have to go over them again and again but um, i am going to actually look at um, doing a video for 5.8 gigahertz and uh, in particular the FPV but uh, I want to actually have a look at uh, you know different kind of builds using different materials probably using something that's round doesn't necessarily mean that you'll have circular polarization but just different ways of actually building this antenna and this antenna as well can be uh, semi omnidirectional because I've just got the slots in the front here but you, you can also add the slots to the back which uh, kind of makes it semi omnidirectional but you do, do have two large null points here but uh, there's a, a lot of diversity in this antenna and as I said it's not really covered here on YouTube but uh, you would have seen this antenna before especially if you've been at an airport or you've been at a harbour where a lot of boats are because you would have seen it and you would have actually seen it spinning round and turning as part of uh, a radar setup so it is used a lot in that situation because uh, taking advantage of the uh, beam width as I just discussed so there's a lot of things we can actually do with this antenna so as always, if you found the uh, video interesting, please give it a thumbs up. Any ideas where I can actually take this to next and ideas for actually uh, designing uh, different shapes, etc., then please drop a comment below. And uh, hopefully you'll join me on the next one.